Lord God, we thank you tonight. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, for corporate worship and the opportunity to come together, Lord, in church. Thank you, Lord, for those who came to church with a heart to hear a word. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for those who come to, to just worship you in spirit and truth. And Lord, I'm asking, Lord, for you to do a mighty work tonight. Lord, this is a word, Lord, that you put in my heart, Lord, that, Lord, I know is important for the body of Christ. And even important for those outside the four walls. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, for the things said, Lord, that you confirm with signs and wonders and someone be saved tonight. Someone will be re-energized, re-motivated, and renewed and revived again. Yes, Lord, we yes. thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus yes. for what you're doing. Anoint my lips of clay. Yes. Lord, anoint me afresh, Lord, and bring a rain of word yes. that your people would hear it and receive it, Lord, and move on it the way they need to move, Lord. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. You know say amen? Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. And I'm certainly honored to those, um, I don't know, man, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed right now. I really am, I'm just, I'm just joking with uh, uh, Karen and Greg, I said, man, I think I like this church. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm staying. Yeah. <laughs> there's something, man, it's so, the energy, the synergy, the, you know, the love that's shown here, it's, it's such a blessing. Amen. And uh, we have a heart. Uh, to do work, uh, the work of the Lord. We're not a, uh, we're not looking to be a mega ministry. We're looking to be to do mega ministry. Amen. Yes. And we all could be mega disciples and make a difference. Amen. In this uh, upcoming week, I want to make sure uh, that you you are reminded uh, that the next Sunday, not this Sunday, we uh, go out to Monroe Park, and we're going to be uh, feeding the homeless and make sure that you get signed up for those things we're going to be bringing. And then also, we're going to make sure that we uh, remind um, on Tuesday, our food pantry will be open this Tuesday. And we are getting inspected, and we should be uh, getting approved. So Amen. we'll be able to purchase food from the food bank. Amen. And be able to do even more ministry on the Amen. outside of our four walls. Amen. Amen. So that's so it's just a blessing, everything that's going on. And I'm just, I'm really almost overwhelmed at times. When I just start seeing how God is moving in all of our lives, and and just excited, and uh, you know, and that, it's funny. It's almost like a paradox that the word that God gave me is so contrary to what I'm really feeling right now. Amen. <coughs> but I do know that God confirmed uh, with signs and wonders that this is the right word. Yeah. You do know, and you've heard me talk about it frequently, that we are overseas in ISIS, and we see Christians being beheaded. We see Christians being massacred simply for their faith and their walk. Yeah. I mean, when they march them on the beach in Libya, and then <laughs> they behead them and execute them. And, and over in uh, Kenya, they go into college and... Those who can read the Quran go on one side, they're saved. And the other ones who can't read the Quran, they're ushered into another room. 145, 146 of them are executed. There's a war going on. There's war going on overseas. There's a war going on in America. We are in a war. It's real. It's so real, yet we got our eye off the ball. We are focused, rightly so, on some things that are injustice uh, has occurred, but we're missing what's really going on. Right now, media is going on 24 hours a day in Baltimore, waiting for someone to throw a cement block or someone to riot or for someone to act out of turn or or for someone to be arrested or not arrested. But don't you know over the last two weeks, the Supreme Court has been hearing uh, arguments about same-sex marriage. Yeah. But you haven't heard even what's going on. You haven't even heard what's being presented because we're being inundated with all this information that's a distraction 
from the real womb. Amen. I'm getting I, I don't I don't have an aunt with those who do whatever they want to do, but I'm here to tell you that our aunt should not be with one another. The enemy is so good at what he does of distracting the Christians and the body of Christ from what's really important. You, you, you're, you're, you're watching right now in the times we're in right now where people are generalizing and throwing words around and we'll say, well, all these people are like this and all these people are like that. And, 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 then, and then when you say it, then you say, well, I don't mean you. <laughs> and it's creating layers of division and hurt and hate it's only a trick of the enemy. We're in a war, and, and you know, and I, I know some people will, will, will have a problem with what I'm getting ready to say, but, but I'm going to tell you, black lives matter. Yes, they do. White lives matter. All lives matter. Tan, yellow lives matter. Red lives matter. All lives matter. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. And what we have going on, and you've got to understand the lay of the land and what's really going on. Ephesians 6 and 12 makes it so clear, For, uh, or, uh, for we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to be speaking on something that, that I have a right to talk about. Amen. Amen. See, a lot of white men cannot talk about what I'm getting ready to talk about in a minute. They get quiet now. <laughs> but the reality of what's going on in America right now the reality of what we're going through right now is that we need to have an honest conversation and make sure that we get focused on the real mission, the real war, and understand who the real enemy is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. You're not my enemy. <laughs> my enemy is Satan. Yeah. 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 But the rhetoric is getting so heated right now. The things being said, the things being posted on social media, we're, we're directing anger and frustration in ways that, that is understandable. Here, here we go. I, I understand younger people are saying, well, I'm frustrated. I need a voice. I need to, we, we've had this happen, this happen. Let me tell you something. I've been, I've been married almost 20, going on 23 years. And uh, I've been knowing my wife for more than 23 years. We're, we're looking at a quarter of a century right now, in a minute. It, my wife and I, we've been refused service. But where my wife was eight months pregnant in a Denny's restaurant, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even give us a glass of water. My, we, my, my son, I raised an African-American son at eight, nine years old and when we got married, and I raised him. And when we moved to Virginia, we had a family, or, 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 or a man and his 19-year-old son and his teenager decided to hold my son down and beat him down as the father watched based on him being in the wrong neighborhood. I, I was awarded an award years ago by my friend Patrick G for, for a Martin Luther King Award when the Aryan hate group tried to uh, come into a library and, ha and, ha and, and, and want to provoke, talk about their hatred and all the things they do in a Chesterfield library. And I stood up and I was on the news and did some other things with a couple other people and, and my life was threatened time and time again. Yeah. I'm not talking about veiled threats, I'm talking about real life threats. My, my, my wife and I have, have endured where people have called me a nigger lover and they call me uh, uh, some other things and I, 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 it's real. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Jesus. People who have, have called us names and they we, we're not refused to give us service based on, the, on the, us being an interracial character uh, a couple, and then we, even here in, in, in Virginia, when we came in, when he used to have our friendlies down the Cloverleaf Mall, would be, be an African-American frequented. 
And we come in there and, and, and young sisters would be, be, be sitting there saying stuff loud enough to try to antagonize my wife and talk and try to make her feel less than because she's married to a white man. And, and at the same time while we were in the Marine Corps, we had African American men and women who were going around telling her the only reason why he married you is because he wanted a slave. Wow. Mm. We, we, we let people call and say, oh, and here, and it gets more person, my family. For the first seven years of our marriage, we didn't want anything to do with us because we were married. She's black and I'm white. I can talk about what's really going on in America because I've experienced something that most people can. I can be objective. Yeah. Because I've experienced racism. She's experienced racism from every side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and let's not even talk about uh, the Marine Corps. When I, was a, when, I, I, I was a warrior. And people would love to have me on their side in their unit. And, and they would say whatever they want to say around me, they're happy. And the moment they married, I know I'm married to a black woman. All of a sudden, they're afraid to even talk to me. Because I'm a threat. Because they, they can't say whatever they want to say. And at the same time, we, we couldn't get accepted. Because African Americans in the Marine Corps we were around, they, they felt like, well, who are you? You're trying to act like you're black. No, I got more soul than you. <laughs> I got more hood in you than you can even imagine. I drove a 14 story project. Only white boy in a 14 story project. Holding my own. Holding it down. I wasn't pumped out by anyone. Hood rat to the hood rat. <laughs> I didn't have to fake anything. I was who I am. Soul was not defined by the color of your skin. Soul is on the inside. It, it, we had it from the Marine Corps. We had it in the, in the community. And then, and, then, and then here we go, in the church. I'm saved, loving the Lord, married. And we're going into churches as a preacher and going into places... And they say, well, you're welcome. Uh, and, and I'm going to African-American church. I go, well, you're welcome to come in here, but you can't preach because you're white. Wow. Then we go into a white church. And they're like, oh. They're like, well, no, you probably won't fit in here. Yeah. Well, I'm telling the truth. Right. When I was candidate, I, when, when I, was, I, I put out my resume years ago to go candidate in churches. Man, they, were, they have our DVDs and all kinds of CDs, man. They have my resume. They're, they're ready to hire me. And the moment they saw the picture of my family, they're like, oh, well, I'm telling you the truth. And so what I'm getting ready to speak about for the next 15 minutes, I can speak about from an objective perspective. <laughs> Because I've seen it and experienced it on every side. And so if, if you get angry, don't get angry at me. Get angry at the devil. Because I'm, I'm telling you the truth that we're missing the mark on what's really going on. John 10 and 10 lets us know real quick. We look at the text. So the thief come not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Yeah. And I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Yeah. Yeah. See, the enemy is trying to come in and distract everyone from what, what's really going on. The enemy is trying to cause division. Yeah. See, what you're hearing in, in conversations, even Christian leaders, they're saying this side and that side. But don't we know there's God's side yeah. and there's the devil's side? Yeah. The devil is a great deceiver. And we need to recognize who he is. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. And no marvel. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, yeah. whose end shall be according to their works. We need to understand who we're fighting right now. See, my fight should be with Sherwood, and your fight should be with me. 
And see, but the, the problem comes into is that we start getting this conversation. We're saying, well, you know what? I'm angry and I'm frustrated about what's going on, how I've been mistreated, how this, how I perceived this person, and how I perceived that person. And we start generalizing and throwing terms out and words out and saying things. Well, they are all like that. That's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. Instead of identifying that God shed his blood his, through his son Jesus Christ for each of us. Yeah. And loves each of us equally. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm going to give God praise for that one. Yeah. So there's a couple steps we need to identify that we need to work on and now that we're in this war. The first thing is, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 6 it, we need to pay attention. It, it, first Thessalonians. <laughs> Tongue twister. Chapter 5, verse 6. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Watch what's going on. Be discerning. Be careful of the conversation we're getting into. Be careful that we're not hurting someone else. Our responsibility is to draw people to Christ, yes, not push people away. Amen. Amen. We are change agents. We are missionaries. We are the ones supposed to be good witnesses. How can we be a witnesses if we're so frustrated and mad talking about this side or that side? There's only one side. It's God's side. Yes. we got a younger generation that's angry and frustrated and does not know how to express itself because they have not, they haven't been loved to a point where they, they, they know that there's only one way, that is to love one another. They don't even understand who Martin Luther King is. Yeah. Martin Luther King will be wrong over in his grave right now. I'm a student of Martin Luther King. Baby, baby. What he did and those in the civil rights movement, we got to understand and respect what they did and how they went about things and how they loved and they protested peacefully and made a difference to bring people together in this country and made the country into what it is right now. Amen. Amen. I mean, you think about who Martin Luther King is and what he has done and, and how, how he transcends all time and, 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 and the march from Selma to Montgomery and what he did for this country. And, and even through a, a racist president, President Lyndon Johnson, who hated black people and is recorded as such, he's the very person who signed off on the Civil Rights Act and the National Voting Rights. Because yeah. God will use yeah. even a person who hates yeah. when you trust God to do the right thing. Yeah. The second thing we need to do is we, make, we need to make sure we stand together. We need to stand together as a church. I'm not just talking about us. I'm talking about the church globally. Yeah. We have a responsibility to stand together. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verses 25 through 30. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. Yeah. How, shall then, how shall then his kingdom stand? And if by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or else, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He, does not with, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathered not with me scattered abroad. The church must stand together. We cannot be divided based on race. But rather grace. The church can't, we can't, all black people can't sit on this side, all Hispanic can't sit on this side, and all white on this side, but rather, just like we are right here, the church globally has to come together and recognize that the same blood that was shed for me was shed for you. It was shed for everyone, all humanity, all mankind, and we must stand together. How can we stand for Christ? 
when we're telling people that when we're saying things and spouting things and put things out in social media that are hateful and create division and we're not even understanding that God came here to redeem all of mankind. Yeah. And that we need to recognize the power that we already have. We don't have to fight a battle that's already won. You know, and, and a great example, I mean, a few months ago, I washed the feet of, of some individuals, and if you weren't here, I washed the feet of Deacon Jonathan Street. Amen. Yep. Amen. And I washed his feet, and I said, Deacon, please forgive every, every, every type of racism, discrimination you went through, Jim Crow laws, everything that was done to you out there that every white man or woman said to you that hurt you was racist, discriminatory, on, their, on every white man's behalf, please forgive me and forgive them. Not for my sake, but for your sake. Amen. There's power in forgiveness. Yes. Yes. But if we walk around mad and we walk around with a chip on our shoulder, we will not get anything done. But, but understand the power. Luke 10, 18 through 19 says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, yes. and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Yes. No matter who mistreats you, discriminates against you. No matter what they say or try to do you, in the end, it cannot destroy you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Understand the power that's already on the inside of you. Yeah. And then we got to learn to pray together. Yeah. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20. You don't mind me being scriptural tonight. I know. This is an important subject tonight. Amen. The church needs to hear this. So we can take this message outside. Matthew 18, verses 19 to 20 says, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Yeah. We, the church needs to be praying. The church needs to be tarrying before God. The church needs to be saying, God, forgive me. The church needs to come together and say, God, we need healing in the land. Yeah, yeah. God, we need you to reconcile. Instead of talking about how bad it is, let's talk about solutions, about the God we yeah. serve, the yeah. one who could do anything but fail, the one who gave us dominion. He didn't make us to tell, but he made us to head. He made us more than conquerors. He did not create us to, to walk with a defeatist mentality or being pessimistic, but rather standing on the word of God and being victorious. And we are the greatest country on the planet. We do not have to be mad at one another. We do not have to judge one another. But understand we serve a God that is so great, so loving, that sent his only begotten son Jesus to die for all of us. Second Chronicles 7 14 says, If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Yeah. What the church needs and America needs is a revival. Yeah. We need a revival to come out of this. Yeah. Out of the ashes of Baltimore, out of the ashes of burned buildings, out of the ashes of disappointment, out of the ashes of racism and discrimination. What we need is a great revival through the land where the country and the world sees churches united, people united, black and white coming together, holding hands, looking at the name of Jesus. And young people say, what are we doing about it? We ain't doing nothing about it, but we ought to be doing something about it. And the first thing we ought to be doing is praying. Yeah. Yeah. Loving. Encouraging, helping one another, and carrying out the work of the Lord. Yeah. Come on, you give God praise, man. And so the enemy we're facing. See, Dr. Dennis Parker, that's my friend, that's my brother. PhD, Dr. Dennis Parker. Yeah. Tall, 6'3", ex-football player. Man, let me tell you, we've had conversations. He's been there for my son when he played college football. 
And he saw that I tried to raise a young African-American male. Yeah. And, he, and, and he respected the fact he saw how I went about things. And he understood I'm not thinking what I'm saying. I understand really what's going on right now. That this is all spiritual. Yeah. 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 We don't have our antennas up. We allow our emotions to ride, and 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 and, what, and and let me tell you, I understand when people say they're frustrated and think it's bad, but Natalie and Doug, you all can attest to this. See, see, 20 years ago, it was much worse than it is now. We're not where we need to be as a country, but we're certainly a lot better than we used to be. Yes. We got work to do, but the church needs to rise up. Yes. The church needs to pray. Yes. We don't need a bunch of preachers and, and, and leaders creating ha uh, uh, hateful rhetoric and talking inciting violence and talking about no peace. No, we need peace. They need a peace. His name is Jesus Christ. We need to approach the name of Jesus Christ. We need to stand on the word of God. We need to pray for one another. And we need to help and love one another. Despite your background, despite where you come from, and love one another. With just a whole New Testament message, love God. Love thy neighbor. The three things the enemy don't want to hear. See, you got in a war, you gotta know who you're fighting, right? And you gotta know how to fight him. Who who we fight? See, I ain't fighting you. See, I, I, no matter where you come from or whatever you cut, whatever kind of issues you got in, and whatever kind of status you're trying to bring me, I love you. Why don't you tell your neighbor I love you? I love, I love you. I love you. No matter where you come from, I love you. I love you. No matter where I come from. But see, we're fighting Satan. Three things he hates. One thing he hates, he hates the name of Jesus Christ. When you start speaking the name of Jesus, it reminds him that he lost at the cross. When you start saying the name of Jesus, you remind
conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You were purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Woo! Hallelujah. To the King of Kings, the Lamb of Lambs. Come on, someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First John chapter 1, verse 7, the B cross says, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin. Yes. Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. You know I love the word. And they sung a new song. Saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Every tongue, every nation, every race, every ethnicity, we've all been redeemed and purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Man, not to be a tale, but to reign on this earth. See, and we don't recognize, it's, 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 see, some of you young folk, see, see you, I, know, I know you say, well, pastor don't know what he's talking about. Pastor, he, he, he's old, and he's a preacher, and he's a pastor, and he's a, a Marine. You don't see what I've been through. Let me tell you, my Godfather, the one I love, who who's such, such a, a critical part of my life for eight years, almost eight years, he refused to even talk to me. Because I was married to an African-American woman. I love my wife, adore my wife. She is fine and she is all mine. And she's my talk to talk to me, but I can strong and I love her. And my uncle, he refused to have anything. He wouldn't even have a conversation. If I called, he'd hang up. My God, Father, and so it caused my, my aunt, my godmother, not to allow her to talk to me. And then when my grandfather passed away, my wife had, we all came up for the funeral, and at the funeral, by the second day, my wife sitting on my uncle's lap. Yeah. And like a dog. Loving on her. But let me tell you about the power of the blood. About five years ago, when he was on his death. Man, I love and revere. He said, Wade, come on here. And he's talking to me, he said, I just want to thank you for Mary and Sherry. Amen. Amen. My father was a racist. And all I knew was hate. I worked at Bell Telephone for 35 years and and the only African Americans I went to see were in the projects. And when I went to see them, we had that interaction. And it caused me, I, I became a product of my environment based on my father. I don't make excuses. Then forgive me for having that hatred. Then I want to thank you for your wife. Because I no longer hate anyone based on their skin. Come on. I love everyone. And I know I can go to heaven now. I have no hatred in my heart. Thank you for bringing Sherry into my life. You made my life full because now I know what love looks like. Tell me about the blood of Jesus. You understood. It's not defined by the color of our skin. But it's rather the blood of Jesus Christ that was purchased for all of us. And then you got to know the power in the Word of God. Yes. Matthew 4, 3 through 11, Jesus Christ was being tempted by the devil himself. Yeah. <laughs> he was trying to give him the world and trying to get him to jump off the ledge. And Jesus <laughs> gave him the Word right back. He, I think he said Deuteronomy 8 and 3, he said, Man does not live off bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Yeah. You don't realize the power we have in the Word. And that's what you've got to put on the devil. Put the word on the devil. And the word will give us our instruction. The word will tell us what to do. And the word is our weapon. Yes. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, for, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any twin sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow and as discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the word of God gives us our instructions and orders our steps. Psalms 
119 verse 133 says, Order my steps in thy word, yeah. and let, let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Ah. And in my closing text, I would like to give you tonight the word of God. Say the word of God. The word of God. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. The word of God yeah. is powerful. But it, uh, uh, Jeremiah 23 verse 29 says, Is not my word like as a fire, yeah. saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. The word of God will break racism. Yeah. The word of God will break discrimination. The word of God will break hatred. If you will put the word on it, quit putting your words to it. Quit trying to fight a battle that's not yours, it's the Lord's. Then put the word of God on it. Because we need a revival. And Jeremiah 20, verse 9 says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Hey. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Yes. Amen. We need a revival. And we need the word of God in our life. We need to put the word on this situation. We need to put the word on this country. But it starts with me. It starts with you. Yeah. We need to have a personal revival. Yeah. Yeah. We can't do anything about Baltimore. We can't do anything about this country until we get it right with God. Yeah. 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 Isaiah 56 and 7, Deacon's Daddy bought this uh, last year. For my house will be called a house of prayer for what? All people. Yeah. When you look around, it's all people. Oh. <laughs> That we need a revival in the land. And we need a phoenix to rise up. And it should be the church. Yes. And how do we do that? By first praying. Yes. Yes. Putting the word on. Being vigilant and watchful and discerning what's going on and being careful about what we say. If it's going to hurt someone, we shouldn't say it. You got that? I get it. Trust me, I get. Uh, and, 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 and certainly, I get. I get it when people say things and, and feel the frustration. And I can not even only imagine what the Loving family went through here in, in Caroline County in the late '60s and early '70s. And they were the ones that brought down the wall so interracial marriages could be legal. Yeah. And see, young people don't even know about that. Even in states right now in the country that it's not even legal for interracial marriages uh, to even be married. In Louisiana, you you legally not even supposed to get married there. Wow. To this day. Mm. Hey. hey. Look. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, we married. <laughs> Are we happy? <laughs> Ain't no one gonna stop that. No way. It don't matter what someone says. People, and you know, and, and we have people, and, and every time we, almost every, not every time, but at least once a month we go out to eat. And we'll go somewhere and we'll sit down and you'll have some waitress, we'll be real smart out there, and come up there and say, they see us holding hands, kissing, I'm talking smack to my girl. And I'm licking my chops. And I mean, I'm talking smack to her. And they're going to say, uh, two checks. Oh, oh. Why? Because they're assuming there's no way we could be together. I could react and get ugly sometimes. But instead, we love and we still give a 20% tip. I start tipping at 20%. You know, you, you want to know how you make a difference? You show people love. Love is an action word. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. So tonight, we as a nation need to rise up. And it starts with us. We need to come together. And we cannot uh, go back out of here the same way we came in here. Mad. <laughs> about Baltimore, mad about circumstances. Rather, we need to fixate our mind on the one who changes everything. Amen. 
He changed everything 2,000 years ago. And his name is Jesus. Yes. Yes.